Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another chapter of Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj's I Am That. And today we will be looking at chapter 44. Just taking a moment to prepare ourselves to listen to the words of the Master, Sri Nisargadatta. I'm enjoying this process of reading these chapters, and I hope you're enjoying them as well. And I hope you are having the same realization that I'm having that it's so simple. It may not be easy, but it's so simple. Nisargadatta makes it so simple. And I really, really, really appreciate his words. And I just want to say thank you, Nisargadatta Maharaj, for really spelling it out for us. Um, for me, the message is, look, if there's a spiritual path, it's from the mind to the heart, to the heart of presence and the heart of being, the heart of awareness, the heart of love. So I hope all of us, myself especially, can reside in the heart and be in the heart and speak from the heart and listen from the heart. And that we can find the truth, to find the truth of what we are and what we always have been. Okay, so chapter 44, the I am is true. All else is inference. Hmm. Maharaj says, or asks, the perceiver of the world, the perceiver of the world, is he prior to the world, or does he come into being along with the world? What a strange question. Why do you ask such questions? Unless you know the correct answer, you will not find peace. When I wake up in the morning, the world is already there waiting for me. Surely the world comes into being first. I do, but much later, at the earliest, at my birth. The body mediates between me and the world. Without the body, there would be neither me nor the world. The body appears in your mind. Your mind is the content of your consciousness. You are the motionless witness of the river of consciousness. You are the motionless witness of the river of consciousness, which changes eternally without changing you in any way. Your own changelessness is so obvious that you do not notice it. Have a good look at yourself and all these misapprehensions and misconceptions will dissolve. Just as all the little watery lives are in water and cannot be without water, so all the universe is in you and cannot be without you. We call it God. God is only an idea in your mind. God is only a concept, an idea in your mind. The fact is you. You are the fact, you, you know. The only thing you know for sure is here and now I am. Remove the here and now. The I am remains unassailable. Hmm. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and what is even prior to the words I am? the direct experience, the living reality of pure being and pure awareness. The word exists in memory. Memory comes into consciousness. Consciousness exists in awareness. And awareness is the reflection of the light on the waters of existence. Awareness is the reflection of the Supreme, the Absolute, the Parabrahman, 
still I do not see. How can the world be in me when the opposite I am the world is so obvious? Even to say, I am the world, the world is me, is a sign of ignorance. But when I keep in mind and confirm in life my identity with the world, a power arises in me which destroys the ignorance, burns it up completely, burns it up completely, dissolves the false, dissolves the illusion, dissolves maya, burns it up 100% completely. And what remains? Find out. Find out what remains after all that you are not disappears. Is the witness of ignorance separate from ignorance? Is it not to say I am ignorant, a part of ignorance? Of course. All I can say truly is I am. I am. I am. All else is inference. But the inference has become a habit. That's one of those clues that Nisargadatta gives us. The inference, I am this or I am that, has become a habit. The formlessness, the formless nature has identified with form and it continues to do so. It has become a habit and a routine. We may call that the conditioning. Destroy all habits of thinking and seeing. Destroy all habits of thinking and seeing. How do you destroy them? You just stop giving them attention. Without your attention, they will disappear. The sense I am is the manifestation of a deeper cause, which you may call self, God, reality, or by any other name. The name, the concept isn't important. The I am is in the world, but it is the key which can open the door out of the world. The moon dancing on the water is seen in the water, but it is caused by the moon in the sky and not by the water. Still, the main point seems to escape me. I can admit that the world in which I live and move and have my being is of my own creation, a projection of myself, of my imagination, on the unknown world, the world as it is, the world of absolute matter, whatever this matter may be. The world of my own creation may be quite unlike the ultimate, the real world, just like the cinema screen is quite unlike the pictures projected onto it. Nevertheless, this absolute world exists, quite independent of myself. Quite so. The world of absolute reality, onto which your mind has projected a world of relative unreality, is independent of yourself, for the very simple reason that it is yourself. Is there no contradiction in terms? How can independence prove identity? Examine the motion of change and you will see. <laughs> what can change while you do not change can be said to be independent of you. But what is changeless must be one with whatever else is changeless. For duality implies interaction, and interaction means change. In other words, the absolutely material and the absolutely spiritual, the totally objective and the totally subjective are identical, both in substance and essence. Mm. It's right there. 
Form is emptiness and emptiness is form. This is nothing appearing as everything, not two things, one thing, <laughs> one no thing appearing as a thing. This is the absolute appearing as the relative. Absolutely material, absolutely spiritual, totally objective, totally subjective are identical, both in their substance and in their essence. All is one, Advaita, not two. Like in a tri-dimensional picture, the light forms its own screen. Any comparison will do. Any comparison that resonates with you, great. The main point to grasp is that you have projected onto yourself a world of your own imagination. It's based on memories, on desires and fears, and that you have imprisoned yourself in it. Break the spell and be free. Break the spell and be free. You are freedom itself says Nisar Gadatta. How does one break the spell? One of those great how questions. How do we do it? <laughs> Tell us, Guruji. Well, assert your independence in thought and action. In thought and action. After all, all hangs on your faith in yourself. On the conviction that what you see and hear and think and feel is real. Why not question your faith? No doubt, this world is painted by you on the screen of consciousness and is entirely your own private world. Only your sense, I am. I am the sense I am. Though in the world is not of the world. Though the I am is in the world, it does not come from the world. By no effort of logic or imagination can you change the I am into I am not. In the very denial of your being, you assert it. Once you realize that the world is your own projection, you are free of it. It's your own projection. You need not free yourself of a world that does not exist. You don't need to free yourself of this world that does not exist. It doesn't exist. It appears, but it doesn't exist. It cannot be said to be. So you need not free yourself of a world that does not exist except in your own imagination. However is the picture, whether you see a beautiful world or an ugly world, you are painting it and you are not bound by it. Realize that there is nobody to force it on you. Nobody's forcing this world on you. That is due to the habit of taking the imaginary to be real. See the imaginary as imaginary and be free of fear. See the imaginary as imaginary and be free of fear. If it's imagined, if it's an illusion, there's nothing to be afraid of. If it's a dream, wake up from the dream. See that it's a dream. See that it's a movie. See your independent nature. See that you are untouched, unharmed. Just as the colors in this carpet are brought out by the light, but light is not the color, so is the world caused by you, but you are not the world. So the world is caused by you, not you the physical body, not you the ego. The world is caused by you, the absolute supreme reality. Nisargadatta says you are always the absolute supreme reality. And just by your own existence as that pure supreme light, you make it possible for the world to come about. But you are not the world. You stand detached, aloof, and independent of it as 
the witness. That which creates and sustain the world, you may call it God or providence or whatever you'd like. But ultimately, you are the proof that God exists, not the other way around. For before any question about God can be put, you must be there to put it. God is an experience in time, but the experiencer is timeless. Even the experiencer is secondary. Primary is the infinite expanse of consciousness. The infinite expanse of consciousness, the eternal possibility, the immeasurable potential of all that was, is, and will be. When you look at anything, it is the ultimate you see. But you imagine that you see a cloud or a tree. Learn to look without imagination, to listen without distortion. That is all. Stop attributing names and shapes to that which is essentially nameless and formless. Realize that every mode of perception is subjective, that what is seen or heard, touched or smelt, felt or thought, expected or imagined, is in the mind. It's in the mind and not in reality and you will experience peace and freedom from fear peace and freedom from fear even the sense of i am is composed of pure light and the sense of being pure light pure being They compose the sense of I am. The I is there even without the am. So is the pure light there without you say I or not. Without you saying I or not. Become aware of that pure light and you will never lose it because you are it. The beingness in being the awareness in consciousness, the interest in every experience that is not describable, yet perfectly accessible, for there is nothing else. You talk of reality directly as the all-pervading, ever-present, eternal, all-knowing, all-energizing first cause. There are other teachers who refuse to discuss reality at all. They say reality is beyond the mind, while all discussions are within the realm of the mind, which is the home of the unreal. Their approach is negative. They pinpoint the unreal and thus go beyond it into the real. The difference lies in the words only. Different words different words. After all, when I talk of the real, I describe it as not unreal, spaceless, timeless, causeless, beginningless, and endless. It comes to the same. As long as it leads to enlightenment, what does the wording matter? Thank you, Nisargadatta. (laughs) as long as it leads to enlightenment and liberation and freedom and peace and love, what does it matter which words are used? Does it matter whether you pull the cart or push it as long as it is kept rolling? Keep it rolling, 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 rolling. (laughs) You may feel attracted to reality at one time, and repelled from the false at another. So attracted or repelled. These are only moods which alternate. Both are needed for perfect freedom. You need to be attracted to the true and repelled from the false. You may go one way or another, but each time it will be the right way at the moment. Just go wholeheartedly 
Don't waste any time on doubting or hesitating. Many kinds of food are needed to make the child grow, but the act of eating is the same. Theoretically, all approaches are good. In practice, and at a given moment, you proceed by one road only. Sooner or later, you are bound to discover that if you really want to find, you must dig at one place only within. One place only within. In the heart of being, in the heart of awareness, in the void beyond being and non-being, emptiness, space, aliveness, presence, inside. It's an inside job, as they say. Neither your body nor your mind can give you what you seek. Neither your body nor your mind can give you what you seek. The being and knowing yourself and the great peace that comes with it. Okay. Thank you, Nisha Gadata. Thank you. So, there are so many teachers out there right now on YouTube. And if you listen to them, they're basically all saying the same thing. It doesn't matter which words you use. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. You know a tree by the fruit it bears. It's all about following your heart. Following your heart, because the inner guru is in your heart. So don't worry about the, the way or the words. As Nisargadatta has said, it's not the belief system, it's the testing, it's the practice. It's the actual looking. It's the actual self-inquiry. The actual process of doing it, of looking, of meditating, whatever your practice is. Yoga, Tai Chi, chanting, the kirtan, meditation, just listening, reading, sitting on the porch. All of it is helpful because all of it is pointing back to your true nature. So don't get caught up in the words, just start. Start here and now. You can only start here and now, where you are. And this is the only place you need to start from because already everything is here. Already this is nothing appearing as everything. Already this is the Pada Brahman. This is the absolute supreme reality and you are that. You are that. That's the title of his book, I Am That. <laughs> I am that which is changeless and birthless and deathless. I am that pure supreme being. Ah, so just inhale his words. Inhale his words. As he said the other day, eat me, drink me, ingest me. Listen, remember, ponder. And allow yourself to wake up to this greater reality. Be ready. Let go of resistance. Let go of fear. Let go of holding on to the little imagined personal self. Allow yourself. Allow the little self to die because it's untrue. It's an illusion. And when it dies, you will see that it never actually was. It was a verb, a process, but it was never a noun. It was never a thing. It was just a process appearing to happen. It was just an appearance. It never actually existed in beingness as a thing. So forgive me, I get excited. <laughs> I love Nisargadatta, I love his words. I hope you don't mind my little commentary or the words that come to me, but I trust that what will be said, what needs to be said will be said. Um, but again, always come back to the master's words. 
the mouthpiece of the divine, the mouthpiece of the beloved. Peace and love, peace and love. May truth prevail. Jaya Bhagavan, victory to God. May God be victorious. May truth be victorious. The truth will set you free. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Peace, Peace, Peace. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again for another chapter of I Am That. Om.